at one in the morning, we were putting in line. We tried to catch that fire. One tree would torch. Within three minutes, there was a hundred fires burning. It, it was unbelievable. You can't just look at things and, and think somebody else will take care of it. It's a totally different dynamic today. If you go to our communities on the west side of Sierra County, they are trapped in the canyons and, and there's one way in and one way out. Why have we been burned all the way around and why is this landscape still here? What we're up against right now is a race against time to preserve this landscape. Working out in the woods was kind of a family tradition. You know, I always make fun of my buddies, you know, I always tell them, well, while well, you guys are headed down towards the bay, I'm headed up into the mountains, and I love it. I live right on the canyon, so if the fire did come, I mean, I'm first in line. The forest structure that we have is very different from what was originally found here. Having regular burns is really good and important for these ecosystems. When we started uh, suppressing those naturally occurring fires, that kind of natural clearing of vegetation through fire didn't occur. That created a situation where we had more trees, more bushes, more flammable material in the forest than would naturally have occurred. If we just let fire go, it's going to be more destructive and we're not going to be able to control it. We need to get rid of a lot of the ground fuels, the surface fuels, the ladder fuels, and then it'll be ready to receive some fire. Forest restoration is many things and it's different for every acre of forest. The large majority is removing those ladder fuels from the landscape. There's also other aspects like hardwood culturing, aspen regeneration, and meadow restoration. It is a little bit of a, I think, shift in mindset about we need to take active management. That's actually how we protect our forests. My family got here in 1852, so I probably won't go anywhere. My grandpa did it, my cousin, my dad's cousins, all of my dad's brothers were loggers. I enjoy the work and I'm able to provide for the family pays all the bills and keeps food on the table, you know, roof over our heads. Even with the additional resources that the state government and the federal government are putting into this stuff, we're gonna continue to need to have a, a diversity of different kinds of, of resource streams to accomplish this. It's extremely expensive. I mean, it's millions and millions of dollars and that's been the issue in the past is we don't have the workforce and we don't have the money. Big labor bills, big fuel bills, parts bills, payments for equipment. We really don't have the financial depth to carry a several million dollars for months and be paid at the end. And I don't think too many loggers do. Sometimes what prevents people from thinking big is this notion that we're never gonna have the money to be able to do what we wanna do. The Forest Resilience Bond changes that mental frame. The NYFP will protect the biological proactive solution to the planning to get to this point. So the Forest Resilience Bond, it allows us to have that upfront capital to pay our contractors back immediately. Our planning footprint is approximately 275,000 acres, so this is an order of magnitude larger than most projects. Doing the work over larger areas means that the cost per unit often goes down and allows us to use that same model with the same partners to be successful at that larger scale. 
And if we didn't have the Forest Resilience Fund, we might start to see invoices that are $400,000 or $600,000 or a million dollars. It can be difficult to come up with that upfront capital to immediately pay your contractors back and then have to wait for a reimbursement from another entity. Collectively, we're moving forward and we're moving at the pace of scale that we need to be moving at, protecting the watershed and to prevent the catastrophic fire. If we don't create plans that are gonna accomplish big things, it's gonna be harder to gain the support of a broad spectrum of people. If we can work collaboratively to implement forest restoration treatments and return prescribed fire across that large of a footprint, and we use the best available science and traditional knowledge to design those treatments, that has the ability to make an impact on the communities that live within that area and protect this watershed. We can reduce the risk of wildfire.